क्वेश्चन सिक्स इज एम्पलीट्यूड मॉड्यूलेटेड वेव डिटेक्शन विच इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिकवरिंग द मॉड्यूलेटिंग सिग्नल फ्रॉम एन दैट इज एम्पलीट्यूड मॉड्यूलेटेड वेव फॉर्म इज कैरीड आउट यूजिंग वी हैव दिस फोर ऑप्शन ऑप्शन वन से इज अ ट्रांसड्यूसर एंड एन एम्पलीफायर ऑप्शन टू से इज अ ट्रांसमीटर एंड रेक्टिफायर ऑप्शन थ्री से इज अ रेक्टिफायर एंड एन एनवेलॉप डिटेक्टर and option 4 says a band pass filter and a transducer well obviously the question is from the topic principles of communication and in fact as a matter of fact this uh, detection of amplitude modulated wave is carried out using a rectifier and an envelope detector so option 3 will be correct another option 3 is correct for question 6 it's uh, more like a factual thing so let's now go to the next question question 7 says in the circuit shown capacitor c1 is charged to 100 volt and c2 to 20 volt after charging they are connected as shown when all the switches are closed the amount of charge flown through the switch s2 is so this is the circuit we have then we can see that switches s1 and s3 are grounded so let's look at the charge at different plates before the switches are closed now it's clearly given that uh, c1 is charged to 100 volt its capacitance is 1 microfarad so that means the charge on the two plates will be plus minus 100 micro coulomb so this is 100 micro coulomb the plus minus sign are already indicated that's how it will be the positive plate will have 100 micro coulomb and the negative plate will have minus 100 micro coulomb whereas for the capacitor c2 the capacitance is 2 microfarad and the voltage is 20 volts so there is plus 40 micro coulomb and minus 40 micro coulomb the charge on the two plates and this is the situation before closing of switches now what happens after closing of switches let's draw the situation again having closed all the three switches so we will have then a figure like this this is grounded and this is grounded too and uh, let's simply suppose that uh, amount of charge q has moved from the left plate to the right plate we can also assume that amount q charge has moved from right plate to the left plate i mean the left plate of c2 to the right plate of c1 let's assume it that way okay so that means the charge here will be then minus of 100 Minus Q micro coulomb. We assume that Q micro coulomb has shifted from this plate to this plate, and in that case, the charge left here will be 40 minus Q micro coulomb. Okay. So what we are considering is that on C2, the charge, final charge, is 40 minus Q micro coulomb, and on C1. the charge is 100 minus q micro coulomb so on the negative plate it is minus 100 minus q micro coulomb for c1 well this is the positive plate this is a negative plate and here it is the positive plate and this is a negative plate so let's start from this point and go across the two capacitors and reach this point and write all the changes in potential so if we do that the first change will be we starting from zero so let's say zero and then the first change is minus of 100 minus q divided by 1 and the second change will be minus of 40 minus q divided by 2 that means we get 100 minus q is equal to minus 40 plus q by 2 which further means 200 minus 2q equals minus 40 plus q or 3q is equal to 240 and q simply is 80 so that means clearly we assume that charge q micro coulomb rather we clearly assume that charge q micro coulomb has flown through switch s2 so the value of q is 80 and that means the charge that has flown through switch s2 is 80 micro coulomb So option three is correct for question seven. Let's go to the next question now. Question eight says 
A particle of mass m and charge q is thrown from origin at t equal to 0 with velocity v equal to i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap units in a region of uniform magnetic field for i cap units. After time t equal to pi m by q b, an electric field E is switched on such that particle now moves on a straight line with constant speed. Then E is. Well, clearly the question is from the topic of uh, magnetism and it's about motion of a charged particle first in a magnetic field alone and then subsequently in combined electric and magnetic field. So if we really look at the situation, the magnetic field is 4 I cap units and velocity initially is I cap plus 2J cap plus 3K cap units. So that means essentially the path of the particle will be helical, right? So its velocity I cap will remain intact, it will not change, but its velocity in the YZ plane will be changing and in fact if we only look at the motion in the YZ plane, it will be a circular motion and we know that time period of that circular motion is 2 pi m by qb. So that means after half the time period, magnetic field is switched on and the particle then moves on in a straight line with constant speed. That means it is moving with uniform velocity and acceleration becomes zero. So let's concentrate on the yz component of velocity which initially is 2j cap plus 3k cap and this is half the time period. So suppose this is the yz plane, we simply draw the yz plane, let's say this is the y axis and this is the z axis at time t equal to 0 in this yz plane, we are not looking at the x component right now. So we have 2j cap on this side and 3k cap something like this, so at t equal to 0 in the yz plane this is how the velocity is at the origin right and uh, i cap well will be outward so if we look at uh, v cross b it v cross b if it is positively charged will be directed this way so it's going to perform circular motion something like this in the yz plane well uh, in 3d actually its motion is helical let me clarify it very clearly but in the yz plane alone it will be moving something like this you know because somewhere here is the center of curvature and you can see that after half time period its velocity in the yz plane specifically in the yz plane will be totally reversed that means its velocity at this time t pi m by qb will become let's call it v f it will become i cap this velocity is not going to change because it is parallel to the magnetic field and the other components will become minus 2j cap, well we can remove this plus sign here and then minus 3k cap units, right? Now electric field E is switched on and the net force becomes 0 which means V cross B or rather Vf cross B plus E is going to be 0 because this multiplied by Q is the Lorentz force and that becomes 0. So the expression for electric field is simply minus of Vf cross B. We already have the expression for Vf and well we can multiply it by the minus sign now. So we get minus I cap plus 2J cap plus 3K cap into or rather cross, we take the cross product with 4 I cap and let's evaluate this, we get it as minus 8 K cap, J cap cross I cap is minus K cap, so it's minus 8 K cap plus 12 J cap and if we look at the options, 12 J cap minus 8 K cap is option 1, so option 1 is correct for question 8, let's go to the next question now. Question 9 says dimensions of mu naught by epsilon naught are where mu naught is magnetic permeability of free space and epsilon naught is permittivity of free space. Well, to find the dimensions, let's recall some expressions where these terms appear, mu naught and epsilon naught appear. So, for mu naught, I use B is equal to mu naught and I, and that means mu naught can be written as b by ni as far as only dimensions are concerned and similarly 
F is in terms of dimensions, it is dimensions of Q square by epsilon naught R square. We know that. After all, the Coulomb's law is F is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R square. So, dimensions of mu naught by epsilon naught then will be same as dimensions of, well, mu naught. For mu naught, we can write B by Ni and for epsilon naught, I write Q square by FR square. This will go in the numerator, right? Okay. And which further on simplification, we can write because F is also QVB. So anyway, so we can further write as far as dimensions are concerned, F is QVB. And so for B, we can replace F by QV. So this will be then F by QV f r square and divided by n i q square and then let's now write the dimensions of the different terms so this will be equal to this is m l t minus 2 again there is another f so it's m l t minus 2 r square will have dimensions l2 length square and then this was q v so q is 80 in SI, V is LT minus 1, the speed, N is L minus 1, I is A, and Q square will be A2 T2. We now have to simplify this. So, let's look at it. M2, there is of course M2. If you look at L, there is 1, 2, 4, and these two cancel themselves. So it is L4. Let's look at now dimensions of T. T minus 2, minus 2, that's minus 4. And these two cancel, then there's minus 6 here. So let's now look at A. We have minus 4, A minus 4. So this is the dimensions of mu naught by epsilon naught that we are getting. And if you look at the options, it is match with option 3. So option 3 is correct. Let's go on to the next question now. Question 10 says, which of the following statements is incorrect for a junction transistor? Option 1 says, the emitter is heavily doped, whereas base is lightly doped. Well, this is a correct statement. And we have to find the incorrect statement. Option 2 says, for amplification, active reason is used. And this is also true. For option 3, for using it as a switch, saturation and cutoff regions are used. That is also correct. And option 4 says, size of collector is smaller than that of emitter. Well, this is not correct. Among the three reasons, that is emitter, base and collector, the collector is supposed to be the largest. The statement given in option 4 is incorrect, but that makes it the correct answer for the question 10. So, option 4 is correct. Let's go to the next question now.